Hello, my name is Victor Jernigan, and this is serious information about real estate. And today I'm talking about how to lose a hundred million dollars with a really noble goal. California and LA County specifically have the goal to help the homeless with a program called Project Room Key, where they're leasing hotel rooms for the homeless. And it is important to remember that a goal, no matter how noble, that is poorly planned and badly executed is still a failure. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The failure of Project Room Key. When COVID-19 coronavirus began to take over the country, nobody traveled. And it was immediately apparent that there were vacancies in hotels all across this country. And in a really, what seemed, I'm sure at the time, a brilliant idea, they decided to commandeer, effectively, up to 15,000 hotel rooms in California. Now, Governor Newsom, the governor of the state of California, set that as a goal. And then, Mayor Garcetti of LA decided he wanted the same goal and so LA was going to get 15,000 rooms in LA County. I mean competing visions for the same thing but the money's paid for by the effectively 75 percent comes from the federal government and since we know the federal government doesn't have any money unless they print it or tax it from everybody else effectively those of us in Tennessee and Kansas and Kentucky and Illinois mm, there's a state that doesn't have any money, uh, are paying for Project Room Key. When they created the plan, they also, of course, had to create a document. And it's a 35-page document that says what's going to happen to the homeless population. So they're going to rent 15,000 hotel rooms, and they're trying to figure out how to get this done, both in L.A. County and in the state. So we have competing goals for multiple rooms. So in theory, you could have 30,000 rooms because certainly the state's not going to rent all 15,000 rooms in LA County. So it winds up being a really contradictory goals. And the plan that's put in place has got all kinds of problems with it that if somebody had just thought about it for a second, you would say, hell, that's not going to work. Because, well, let's first look at, they got to identify the population and then they've got to get them to want to move off of the street. So let's start with the first and obvious problem. You've got to get people to leave where they are on the street and move to a hotel room where they're going to be put into a room with a locked door. Now, there's all kinds of video on the internet, all kinds of video. You can Google, uh, one of the best is uh, San Jose Homeless Camp the jungle. There's probably a hundred hours of video on this one camp back in 2014 and 15 that was one of, if not the largest homeless camp in America at the time. And what you see in that camp, and it translates to all these homeless encampments all over the country, is that the people who live in the homeless camps create a place they call home. They don't view the shelter that they create to be terrible they look to make it their home. There's a great book everybody should read if you're in the real estate business for sure, but if you've got social issues you just want to be smarter about, The Making of Home uh, by Judith Flanders. It talks about where the word home comes from and how we spent 500 years going from the word house to home. And so the people of LA and California in their most noble ways decided that they decided that those people who lived in the, those terrible conditions should be housed in something that is better for them. But they forgot to take the vote of the homeless people who they were going to have to force to move. And then in the document, and we'll get into that in just a, a minute, but in the document itself, <laughs> it says, that the um, homeless are not to be told which hotels are uh, in the program and which ones aren't, that the homeless can't walk up to a particular hotel and ask to get into the hotel because all of it's being negotiated by the negotiators 
for the um, Los Angeles uh, Sustainable Housing uh, Group, LASHA. And the, this group has these negotiators who go around and look to acquire the hotels. Of course, well, let's stop there and watch this one minute video from uh, KQED News to see if uh, you'll get the understanding of why things get off the rails in a hurry. At a site of a Motel 6 uh, here in Santa Clara County. The reason we're here uh, is to mark an important milestone. With nearly 11,000 rooms secured, plus a new 5,000 room deal with Motel 6, Governor Newsom is now ahead of the goal he set two weeks ago. It is called Project Room Key, and for Santa Clara County, that means uh, 1,123 uh, rooms that can be available now for those COVID positive individuals, those homeless individuals who are vulnerable to come in from the cold. Part of the appeal for mayors like Sam Licardo is that they don't carry much of the cost. Getting that 75% reimbursement from FEMA. But there have been challenges. Cities and counties have struggled to find the staffing required to manage the hotels. And there has been another problem. We have completed the process of identifying and offering hotel rooms for our vulnerable persons. I can say that not all of them have accepted our offer to move to our hotel room. To those who say the governor is moving too slowly. Well, we announced this two weeks ago, so uh, respectfully, I think this is a rather heroic effort. The governor has also called this project a path towards resolving the state's pre-existing crisis. Today, that hope was echoed by the mayor of San Jose. We don't want these rooms simply open for a few weeks or a few months. Let's give counties and cities the dollars they need to purchase motels so we can really aggressively address the homelessness crisis that will be here well beyond the time that this pandemic passes. There has been some pushback to this plan, specifically in Southern California. And today, without naming names, the governor called out those local governments. He said those leaders would be found on the wrong side of history. In Contra Costa County, Wilson Walker, KPIX 5. As you can see, Governor Newsom is standing in front of a Motel 6. He gives you where it is, and the narration talks about how they've got 10,000 rooms already agreed to, and they just struck a deal with 5,000 Motel 6s, uh, five for rooms with Motel 6, for 5,000 rooms. <laughs> so in the document itself that they've agreed to, nobody's supposed to tell where the specific hotels are so the homeless just don't walk up to the particular hotel, any hotel, and try to get in. Because there's really rules and procedures that the homeless have to have to be able to qualify to get into one of these hotel rooms. But they also point out that they've only leased about 3,000 of the rooms. So there's 7,000 vacant rooms that are already leased and they struck an agreement for 5,000 more. So I'm sure these negotiators are really sharp, but what got me started on this was that these people in California, in the, again, in their a, a goal, no matter how noble, poorly planned and badly executed, is still a failure, did not grasp that simple concept. And so they've got agreements, they're paying for 10,000 rooms, they've got 3,000 occupied um, when the, the, the video that you just saw was playing. And so that's a so simple math, 7,000 vacant rooms. If you look at that, and I'm sure the negotiators did a great job, and we're not going to worry about trying to balance out taxes, and the government's going to be leasing the room, so they're not going to be paying, paying taxes, so just less tax coming in. But let's just say it's $150 a night straight through for all of the 7,000 vacant rooms. Simple math, a million dollars a day in losses. Now, the other problem is that these rooms um, have to be uh, managed. The, the controlling document, the 35-page controlling document, says that before the homeless move in, there will be staff placed at every hotel, whether you have one person or a hundred rooms full of people, it'll be staffed 24 hours a day. So, and it gives you, and the document tells out the kind of people that you got to have. So let's think through that for a second. Where are all these people going to come from? They're going to staff these hotels 
for the homeless. So it turns out that the main impediment after you can't get the homeless to move in, <laughs> the first impediment is the homeless don't want to move in. The second impediment is they don't have enough people to man the hotels that they're trying to move the homeless into. So they can't physically do what their document says to do. And then they get this food delivery thing. And I can go on and on. I'm just hitting the highlights. Uh, and I encourage everybody to do it. You can just Google Project Room Key, make the effort to prove to yourself that what I'm talking about is accurate. But it's only a hundred million dollars. It's not like it's real money. And so the, um, and I don't want to be getting into giving lectures to people how they should spend their money because, I mean, obviously, if California was making the decision to spend their money the way they wanted to spend it, I wouldn't care. But since 75% of the money is coming from the rest of the country, I've got skin in the game. So they've got the rooms rented. They got into this big debate about whether they were going to try to rent rooms from the Ritz-Carlton or not. Now, I'm not saying anything about the Ritz-Carlton at $700 or average room price a night or a Motel 6. But the, the fact is they're getting into this debate about whether they should rent the rooms from the Ritz-Carlton or not. And the Ritz-Carlton says, uh, no, we don't want you to rent any rooms from us because we also have permanent guests staying in the hotel because half of our building is condominiums. That seems to be quite seriously logical to me. I, don't, I, think, I think a lot of people that will watch this video will say, I'm all for helping the homeless. I'm just not sure I want to move any homeless into my house. Now, I'm not saying that that's not a, a you're being selfish because you're saying that. It's just the way it is. A lot of people don't want strangers who don't have any way of verifying really who they are and have known mental issues and other problems living next to them. That unfortunately is one of the issues impacting the homeless population. But somehow, once again, the city council in Los Angeles, especially uh, Councilman Bonin, I believe that's how you spell it, say his name, Councilman Bonin. Um, they, uh, let, me let me take a moment just to read this. Uh, Councilman Bonin says he is also pushing for the city to use federal funding to secure longer term accommodations for the unhoused. Well, the problem with that is 75 to 85 percent of all the homeless in every city in America, this is well documented, every city in America is from that city. There's always, you know, I'm in Knoxville, there's all this stuff about how other counties are sending us their homeless. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but the reality is. 75 to 80 percent, 85 percent of all the homeless in every city are from that city. So why would the federal government pay for a housing problem that's in Los Angeles for housing the homeless that are from Los Angeles? I mean, I, I recognize that there, it's a big issue, but that's a Los Angeles issue. That's not a Knoxville, Tennessee issue. Knoxville, Tennessee, we've got our own problems with housing the homeless that we have to deal with. But it's certainly not the job of the federal government to send money from other places to Los Angeles for them to deal with a problem that's their problem. Now I'm digressing because what happens is in this document of uh, the homeless population, they've got all kinds of things that just don't make any sense. So I've stayed in a number of hotels. <laughs> of all kinds, and they're, going to, and they're going to be renting hotels, and where applicable and feasible, men and women will be separated by a floor or will have designated size, sides of the hotel motel, and participants will be asked to self-quarantine. Now, let's just think that through that for a second. They're going to have these hotels. They're going to rent these hotels. And, oh, oh by the way, the small hotels, those people with 50, 60 rooms that are all over LA, the small mom and pop operators that are still in existence, the boutique hotels, they want to join the program. They've got empty, they're empty. They'd like to get the government money to come in for three months uh, and pay them for these rooms that were already vacant. The problem is that the uh, people that are uh, supplying the people to work at the hotels don't want the small hotels because they're looking for larger properties so that they can scale. In a perfect world, they've got the marker. They want 100 rooms and up. So if you've got 98 rooms, you don't qualify. So let's think about those hotels that don't get to participate in this government largesse of taking our money and paying for vacant rooms. So, but they want to be prudent. And so the people who are on the street aren't separated on the street. There's men and women living next to each other on the street. 
But in these hotels, they're going to be separated. And men are going to be on one floor and women are going to be on another floor. I'm pretty sure everyone I've ever stayed in, there's fire, uh, the, the, the stairs that connect the floors. The doors are always unlocked and you can go from floor to floor if you want to. Uh, the idea, then they've got this belongings policy. Everything you have to take with you has to fit into, as they describe it in the document, a large garbage bag. So if you have a shopping cart that you own, in which a lot of your possessions are, you don't get to take your shopping cart. That is another problem of the people who are houseless, shelterless, roofless, consider where they're living their home, and they've got all their possessions with them. I could go on and on with the stupidity of the way in which this program was implemented. The Councilman Bonin, who is uh, talking about commandeering hotel rooms because the hotels like the Ritz-Carlton received tax credits and benefits to build their hotels on, in downtown LA. And so they got this money and so they should now be forced to house homeless, give back, as uh, Councilman Bonin said. Again, I don't mean to be lecturing, but the reason that the city of Los Angeles and every city in America gives tax benefits to developers to build certain things is that the city has decided that they want whatever that project is to happen. And it becomes a, a situation in which developers propose to build something that they view will be successful. They persuade, they induce, they talk to the city council about why that project should happen. And the city council in return says, you know, that was a good idea. Why don't we induce other people to bid on that project? And let's see if we can figure out a way to get that built. And so the agreement is made that the city is going to provide funding in some form or the other to induce someone to build something that the city thinks will be a great thing for the city. The city council views it to be a great thing. And so the city council votes to, to give the money because they want to share in the risk of whatever the new building is. And the only condition of that money that the city's going to give is that the people that are receiving the money build what they say they're going to build and operate it the way they say they're going to operate it. There's no future commitment on anybody's part to do more funding, to ask more things, to require more services. There's no part of that agreement. Councilman Bonin uh, surely knows that. And if he doesn't know that, he shouldn't run for re-election in Los Angeles. Now, again, I'm not saying that Ritz-Carlton couldn't offer to do that. The people who own those $40 million condominiums at the Ritz-Carlton in downtown LA could certainly say, please send the homeless right on in. But the people who have all those vacant rooms in Beverly Hills could do the same thing. I am positive right now today, there are 15,000 vacant bedrooms in Los Angeles. And according to Mr. Bonin's logic, Councilman Bonin's logic, all those people would have to do is say, we're going to move the homeless into our house and there won't be any more shelterless population on the streets. But they've got a plan that is being poorly executed, badly designed, and by the time they finish with it, the million dollars a day in losses that we can easily identify will be, I view, more than $100 million and the program will still have failed because they're moving a homeless population into neighborhoods where they have never existed. And the economic incentive of the motels that they're taking over, where are the people who would be staying in those motels and hotels, where, they're going, where are they going to stay? The working person, the, per the traveling salesman, the family that's on a budget. If the state has taken over all of these rooms, where will the population that pays to stay somewhere and pays local taxes and buys food in the restaurants, buy, goes shopping, where are they going to stay? 
And once the program runs out of money and the homeless are in the motels and they've been moved into the motels, how are they going to be relocated? Are they just going to be put back out on the streets in whatever neighborhoods they exist in? That really wasn't thought through very well. There's no part of this plan that makes sense. A great and noble goal is still a disaster. I hope you like the videos that I do. I, I hope you uh, subscribe to the channel. I want to provide information that is a, a different perspective from other people that talk about real estate investing. If you have a comment on something or a question about something involving real estate, please post it in the comments. I'm, I make a real effort to read the comments and to certainly uh, look for topics to cover in future videos. Thank you very much.